untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today I was taking a look at a Naya Planeswalker deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring two copies of Kabareti Ascendancy, an enchantment saying at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library, if it's a creature or Planeswalker card, reveal it and put it into your hand, if not you can still decide to put it on the bottom. So Ascendancy of course would be at its best in a very creature and Planeswalker heavy deck, where we're very likely to reveal one and draw an extra card every turn basically. But the problem there is that we're spending 3 mana not impacting the board, which most creature decks can't really afford, so instead we're playing it in a more controlling build alongside a bunch of planeswalkers that also play well alongside sweeper effects, especially Farewell, which can exile everything except for planeswalkers to keep the board nice and clear, and then in the meantime Ascendancy can provide extra card advantage and potentially put some lands on the bottom as well, so we keep drawing action to hopefully win the late game. So that's the idea behind the deck. It's also heavily metagamed to beat the various red-white burn decks that are the most popular in best of one standard at the moment, with four main deck copies of Sunset Revelry, which can gain four life, make a pair of 1-1 tokens, maybe even draw a card in the more controlling matchups. And then we've got plenty of sweepers with two copies of Doomscar, which can be foretold early on, Got two Incandescent Aria, and since most of our Planeswalkers make creature tokens, and we even have Revelry that also makes tokens, those don't die to Aria, whereas it does hit most of the cards out of the Boros Burn deck, for instance. And then we also have our two copies of Farewell at 6 mana, which is great at dealing with other permanents that our other sweepers can't handle. Then we also have some spot removal with two copies of March and two copies of Fateful Absence, mostly important to deal with opposing creature lands, which our sorcery speed sweepers cannot handle. And then we have, of course, our Planeswalkers and other creatures, two copies of Mila, which can maybe draw extra cards if the opponent tries to target our various permanents, can also be played as the Wayward Bonder at 6 mana, even though we don't have a ton of creatures to discard to the plus one, so mostly playing the Crafty Companion. Then at 4 mana, full set of Wandering Emperor, great at dealing with opposing creatures with the minus 2 and eventually helps us take over with the Samurai tokens. We've got two copies of Arlen to make a pair of Wolf tokens, maybe transforms to Knight and then we can beat town with the 5-5 Werewolf as well. And then Fleetfoot Dancer times 2, a nice 4-4 Trample Lifelink Haste, also shines against the Boros Burn deck as another source of life gain that can also help us end the game, and at 4 Toughness survives most of the burn spells that the Boros deck is running. And then at 5 mana I've got 2 copies of Renan 7, not the best positioned card at the moment since Brutal Cathar is so popular and that can easily exile our Tree Folk no matter how large it is, but still just one of the best Planeswalkers we can be playing in these colors. And then at 2 copies of Elspeth Resplendent, which can give various abilities counters and plus one counters to our creatures, so also shines alongside our Fleetfoot Dancer or maybe a large Tree Folk token. And then at 6 mana, two copies of Vivian, mostly going to be using the minus one to make a 4-4 Rhino token, but can use that multiple times. And then I've got our Farewell and two copies of Emiria's Call, which we can play as a land or a 7 mana sorcery to make a pair of angel tokens. And then a mana base also has two copies of Cave of the Frost Dragon, which can be another finisher, also very nice with Elspeth putting various plus one counters and ability counters on it. Same with Wandering Emperor, which can also give it plus one plus one and first strike. And then the rest of our mana base has Jetmir's Garden, one Igancho as our channel land of choice, one of each basic, all 12 pathways, and some of the Innistrad duels with Sundown Pass and Farmland, since white is our primary color. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems fine. Good mix of interaction, ways to stabilize, and eventually clean up with Farewell. And up against Blue Reds. Probably not our favorite matchup, prefer playing against creature decks. Make that Grixis, turn to Harvester. That is a creature. Don't think we want to Revelry just yet. So we'll just pass. Take three. And Fable of the Murbreaker could exile the token with March. That seems okay. And then eventually can get rid of the uh, Reflection with Farewell. So now play Revelry, still doesn't draw a card, but at least gains life and makes a pair of tokens. 
which can trade for Harvester. And then we're looking at a turn 4 Arlen, maybe turn 5 Elspeth. Get rid of a Voltage Surge. And offers a trade. They might have the Corpse Appraiser here to draw after Harvester trades. That still seems acceptable. Another Voltage Surge to blow up the double block is totally fine. And uh, yeah, play Arlen. Next turn we'll be able to play Elspeth at the cost of 3 life. And then really want to try and deal with the uh, reflection before it starts generating value by copying Harvester. So unlikely to see an attack. Another Voltage Surge finishes off Arlen. Okay. Alright, so we know we can farewell next turn. So opponent will get to copy Harvester next turn. Question is, do we still want to play Elspeth here? Don't think she's in any immediate danger of dying. Of course, whichever wolf we plus on is going to end up dying. Can give it Vigilance to get an attack in. And then uh, next turn, opponent uh, probably just copies Harvester, kills the 3-3 wolf. And then probably doesn't even attack. And then we'll wipe the board with Farewell. And then we'll need to make some more creatures to leverage Elspeth. Every job is an opportunity to learn more about this city. I know there's a hero inside. Vigilance. Attack for three. Conan takes it, and uh, we'll see what else they do this turn besides copying Harvester. Starting to empty our hand, so Revelry can actually draw a card. And then we're hoping they commit something else to the board that dies to farewell. Opponent actually attacking Elspeth with both. In which case, do we double trade or do we just trade the one token? Let Elspeth take three. They've already shown triple voltage surge, so I guess they could have a third copy. Or they might just want Harvester in the graveyard to play Corpse Appraiser. Um, which we can deny by not blocking Harvester. So I think we'll try this. I'm still likely to cast Farewell next turn, but this might uh, get us a bit more value. Opponent passes, and the land means we can save a Maria's Call, which is also important. So we'll plus give this a lifelink, probably. Get one last attack in. And then there still won't be any creatures in Graveyard for Corpse Appraiser. So Exile Artifacts, Creatures, Enchantments, Graveyards, everything can go. I guess Farewell Exile in Graveyards also would have offset their uh, Corpse Appraiser, but they would have been able to maybe get some uh, value beforehand to a Make Disappear. Not a card I was expecting, so that's problematic. So now we can lose our wolf to the Harvester, and all of a sudden we could be in trouble here. So it might have been better off letting them tap out for a Corpse Appraiser. Token kills wolf, Elspeth takes at least three. And another Harvester. Well, could use another Sweeper here. So we can cycle Garden in the hopes of pretty much finding Incandescent Aria to wipe the board. Alternatively, we just Revelry, make a few Chum Blockers, although they won't necessarily keep Elspeth alive. 
but I guess Revelry would also draw. So I guess we'll start by just casting Revelry here and see what we pick up before deciding on Garden. Picked up Mila. Alright, that's a little helpful. Play that, and then I'm more into the idea of playing Garden Tapped, so we can play Mira's Call next turn. And then probably plus on a 1-1 one -one token, since Mila's likely dying. Show him what you've got. And give that a lifelink or a first strike, maybe. Still need to find an answer for Reflection, since we cannot keep up with them killing a creature every turn. Five mana means he could play Evelyn now, but not if they still activate Reflection. Takes out Mila, draws a card. Another Revelry. So we could still maybe save Elspeth. But a Fading Hope bounces our token, so Elspeth down. No point in chumping. And another Revelry. So Revelry doesn't draw us a card unless we play both. Or we can go for a Miria's Call, but that's kind of a slow bleed against Harvester. Doesn't seem incredibly helpful. So I guess we double Revelry and then um, hope to find a Sweeper to reset the board. Alright, there we go. Incandescent Aria is exactly what we needed. And then we've got an Emirius call to try and take over with an opponent at 12. So interesting game. We suspect our opponent has an Evelyn in hand since they've been struggling to kind of play out their cards. Massacre for one cleans up our tokens, that's fine. And let's go for Emirius call. Opponent can start sacking blood tokens to go digging. Might see another fading hope, bounce an angel. Alright, opponent just untaps. Tapped hive. So if they have another massacre, it would not have been able to kill our angels. Get to hit for eight and make a pretty sizable tree folk. And then probably gonna see them play Evelyn end of turn. And then, depending on what they find of Evelyn, we could win or lose this game. Alright, no Evelyn. That's surprising. So, Massacre for 4 cleans up the Angels, but still means they're in trouble against our Tree Folk. Opponent didn't even go digging with the Blood Token, so... Not sure what they're holding. Hive can finish off Ren, but that leaves him very dead on the way back. So not a concern. They're looking through the graveyard. Maybe it's a uh, adversary that's going to come and play. Replaying a Fading Hope. Nope, just a Deadly Dispute. And now they're going to go digging with the Blood Tokens, but it seems like it's too little too late. Yeah, it was a lot of back and forth. I thought we were going to stabilize with that... Uh, Farewell, but kind of an unexpected make disappear to counter it, and then Fable plus Harvester seem to be taking over as we eventually drew into our Aria. They did find a Fading Hope for the Tree Folk, so yeah, game may not be over yet. Still facing two lethal angels. Blood Token goes digging. They've already played their fair share of Voltage Surge. So unlikely to find another. Last blood token to find another Fading Hope. Did they get there? 
They did not, and our opponent concedes. Alright, they got there against the Grixis Vampires, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is a little slow, missing some cheaper cards and no sweepers to catch back up. Just gotta hope that uh, me line to a bunch of Planeswalkers is good enough. Turn 1 Planes is scary, especially for opponents on Mono White as opposed to Boros, because cards like Thalia and Spellbinder are quite punishing for a slow deck like ours. Alright, opponent is Red White, which is strangely comforting. And then uh, get more white mana in play. Next turn we can play Mila. Could see a burn spell end of turn. That's fine. So probably Cavalier here giving initiate a counter. Gonna hit pretty hard. So we're under pressure. Next turn initiate grows again. So I probably have to keep up Iganjo, which does let them transform Cavaliers. It's not ideal. And then we may not have a land for Wandering Emperor, but just going for Mila here seems pretty weak. So our opponent attacks, they do get to train. But we get to kill Cavalier. And then hopefully pick up another land to play Emperor. Eruption goes phase down to 6, there's a land. And then... I should probably just Emperor now. Let's see, if um, opponent plays a Raichu, I guess I could still respond with Emperor. So then it doesn't matter. It's not like they're not gonna attack. And given that we have two, maybe it's okay to actually main phase it. And then if they have another haste creature or burn spell going after Emperor, I'm pretty happy. Just wanna make sure we gain two. Gonna be an adversary finishing off Emperor, presumably. And we could run it back. Or we can pass this time to make a 2 2 Samurai at instant speed. Or just play Mila. It's a little weaker in the face of a bigger haste creature like Raichu, which they could easily have in hand. So I think passing with Emperor is still slightly better. And then if they attack. Just make it 2 2. If they have a play with fire, they can decide to either kill Emperor or the Samurai, which is fine by me. Right, play with fire kills the Samurai. And there's land number 5, which is important. So now I can play Mila Fortel Doomscar. Could make a token with Emperor, and then maybe plus Elspeth to give lifelink, although Brutal Cathar is a concern. Um, Renan 7 make a token, Emperor make a token. Helps against that a little bit, so we have at least one blocker. Or I can just play Mila, and then make a Samurai as well. Uh, which is, I guess, slightly weaker against land into Raichu. So I think safest play overall, probably just make Samurai, make Tree Folk. Although Valorous Stance end of turn could get us. Does not seem to be the case. So Brutal Cathar, I guess it is Knight. So just a 3-3 first strike, doesn't exile the Tree Folk. Seems like we both forgot about it. And now we can go digging, and then a uh, lifelink from Elspeth Resplendent should seal the deal. We've got a revelry to gain more life. So how do we want to do this? We can go Elspeth, lifelink, and that should be good enough. So we want to avoid double spelling. Could have also grown the Samurai. Show them how we greet our so it can block adversary profitably. 
but yeah, just getting this massive attack in is already a big deal. Maybe a burn spell on our token and then clear some planeswalkers can help them out. Just a royal eruption killing Ren. And it's Royal Eruption number two, so yeah, we were at six, they had double Royal Eruption in hand. Good thing we gained some life. Opponent managed to double spell to exile our tree folk, so yeah, they're maybe clawing their way back. But conveniently, Revelry still makes two tokens and gains four. Although we may end up casting Doomscar anyway, so not sure how relevant that is. Or we can just uh, play Vivian, make a 4-4, and keep plusing Elspeth, which I also kind of like. Or we can go for Revelry plus Mila, and then plus some Mila, that's also pretty decent. So we have options. Gaining life is never a bad idea. And then plus for lifelink for Tele Dooms car, why not? Can ultimate Elspeth next turn if we want to, and there's no sweepers out of the red white deck we need to worry about. And that'll seal the deal. Alright, so interesting game against Boros. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems keepable. Lots of sweepers and a Fleetfoot Dancer. Could use some Planeswalkers. Up against Emiria's Call, pointing towards a more mid rangey white deck, blue white control. Light Scribe, okay, never mind. So, a Magecraft deck. So, we can foretell Doomscar and then cast it with double white next turn, alongside maybe an Aria. Opponents probably has some protection spells to keep their creatures alive. Between slip out the back and other potential tricks. So best case scenario for us, they tap out and add some more creatures to the board. That's unlikely to happen. Just a guiding voice. Could learn for sorcery, which prevents us from naming Doomscar. Although unlikely that they do that this early in the game. Another Homestead Courage to pump a Light Scribe hits us for six, so no longer dies to Aria. And then they may have a slip out the back for Doomscar. Yeah, that uh, lines up quite well for them, but I don't think we have a better play. A Light Scribe still has to go. Could be that they have a Fading Hope in hand instead. Now Dancer can maybe swing the race back in our favor. Or we can get an Arlen and play first, although Dancer into Elspeth is pretty sweet. All these uh, dual lands kind of point towards Delver of Secrets being in their deck as well. Symmetry Sage into Teachings to draw three. Pretty good value. Okay, so probably go for Dancer as Arlen's going to be under pressure from Symmetry Sage. And then we want double green. And then next turn, hopefully, Arya killing two creatures. And yeah, for points playing Delver, Symmetry Sage, Lumimancer, probably. They have a lot of cheap creatures they might play out here. That would run right into our Arya. It's gonna be a Storm Chaser Drake. Can start drawing cards if they target it. Still dies to Arya. Homestead Courage. So if we go for Arya, they probably Fading Hope their own Drake now to save it. Not sure what the alternative play would be, because they can of course just bounce the Fleetfoot Dancer as well. So I guess we'll start by attacking, see what they do. And then decide second main. Alright, opponent taps out for Delver, that's probably the best case scenario for us. Now Arya wipes the boards. And we can keep up the pressure with our Fleetfoot Dancer. Alrighty. Not gonna spend too much time on this. Hit for four. 
and we can use an extra land and play. So they probably don't have a fading hope then. A light scribe. They might be playing Virtuoso as well. So that's a lot of creatures for a Delver deck if they also have Storm Chaser Drake. And I presume Lumomancer. So opponent passes with three mana. They could have their own Iganjo, which is a reason to put a plus one counter on Fleetfoot Dancer with Elspeth. Or we can just make a huge tree folk with a Ren. Yeah, I don't think they have Fading Hope given their earlier plays. So I'm kind of liking Elspeth to play around Iganjo. However niche that may be. Could also just be another pump spell for Light Scribe. So can go for either Vigilance or Flying. Probably Vigilance. To protect Elspeth. And our opponent would need a lot of pump spells to trade profitably with Light Scribe. Maybe a show of confidence. But they would still need to cast another spell. And for single blue that seems unlikely. Yeah, let's go with Vigilance. And attack. And because of Trample they can't like jump and slip out the back to prevent the damage. Okay, maybe they do have some other spell here. Of course, if they have a Ganjo, they can trade Light Scribe and a Ganjo. It's going to be, you see, a guard approach instead. Okay, that plus another spell maybe gets there. And yeah, show of confidence like we kind of suspected. All right, so flying, I guess, might have been the play, but uh, Bonus still had to cast all those spells. Get to gain five and Farewell can still clean up their creature. But we may lose Elspeth as well. All right, Homestead Courage will finish off Elspeth. So yeah, good sequence of events for the opponents. Could have played around it slightly better. But Farewell now also exiles the Homestead Courage, so it doesn't leave the opponent with a whole lot. And I guess we can play around Jory Disruption, since they're playing Delver as well. Slip out the back and maybe still save the Light Scribe, but they don't have it. And we get to untap with two Planeswalkers. Get to finally see it in action. Play that alongside Arlen. Make a couple of wolves. Another Light Scribe. Ascendancy triggers. Bottoming a land. Finding another land. And Ren can make a Tree Folk. And then we could attack here. Although if they have another instant, they get to eat a wolf. And then pressure our Planeswalkers, so... How about we just stay back and play Ren, make a Tree Folk. And then next turn we can attack with the team. And I'll keep Garden in hand to potentially cycle. Stormchaser Drake. Can that get them back in the game? Maybe alongside a Homestead Courage to draw. Ascendancy bottoms a land. Good to get those out of the way. Cave is good. I guess we'll start by cycling Garden, see what we pick up before we decide. Farewell. So maybe I should just attack with the Tree Folk. And then we can plus with Arlen, play a tapped cave. And if Drake attacks to pressure our planeswalkers, then uh, cave gets to attack back as well. Still drawing extra cards of Ascendancy eventually. 
Alright, opponent had a guard approach. Fading Hope deals with our tree folk cleanly. Okay. So game's not over yet. Arlen's gonna transform back into the front side as her opponent casts two spells. Otherwise, the 5 5 could have maybe closed out the game. And another guard approach just to cycle. And a guiding voice, okay. They get to learn, draw a card, add a counter, which can now finish off one of our planeswalkers. Expanded anatomy for vigilance, actually pretty nice. They might have to farewell to clean up the drake now. Put on deciding which planeswalker to attack. Goes for Arlen. And the Mirios Call we can keep on top. And we could just cast it and then attack. Or we can farewell if we're really scared of this Storm Chaser Drake. Yeah, let's just make a Tree Folk. Cast a Mirios Call. And attack for two. Don't lose our Wolf. And next turn, hopefully attack for the win. But if there's one card that can get them back in the game, it's probably Storm Chaser Drake. So it would have been a reason to still reset it with Farewell. But also don't want to give the opponent some more time to draw out of it, so applying pressure seems reasonable. Delver of Secrets shows up. A one card in hand. Opponent could start casting their own Emiria if they draw it now. And a show of confidence. Draws a card and a counter. Consider. Still have an indestructible tree folk back on defense, so the Drake's not attacking here. Another Delver. Those are probably going to be chumping. So, if we turn on Cave next turn and attack with all, what happens? Chump, eat a flyer, chump, and then still take lethal. Alright, sweet. So, didn't really get to draw any extra cards with Ascendancy, but bottoming a few lands still useful, and eventually it would start finding some planeswalkers or creatures as well. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow to get going, but we have Doomscar to catch back up and Ravelry, so I think it's okay, assuming we can hit a few land drops. And then might play Mila as a creature, and then maybe can save the second copy to play the Planeswalker. Get rid of our tapped Emiria, and then uh, should be able to curve out nicely. Foretelling Doomscar on 2, playing Mila on 3, unless we need to wipe the board. Against Red Green, can assume this is some sort of creature deck. If it is Werewolves, then we could get punished by uh, Foretelling Doomscar on 2, since that doesn't really cast a spell, so it would already switch to Knight. So that's a situation we would prefer to avoid. Opponent Naya Colors instead, turn to Thalia, also pretty good against our deck in general. Play this cave and foretell Doomscar. At least Mila is still a valid play on three. So maybe a Naya aggro slash humans deck. They could have an elite spellbinder. Adeline also very effective. So let us play Mila. And then that can hold off Thalia. Could have gone for Revelry already, but kind of hoping to draw a card with it. Adversary pumps the team, so now Thalia still gets to attack past Mila. So probably just gonna chump Adlin and then wipe the board next turn. So we'll be at 10, and our opponent gets to make the first move here. So we'll see. Sigarda's a good one. 
can hope to exile her with Wandering Emperor. So that's probably the play here. As opposed to going Mila plus maybe Revelry, or I guess Revelry first. Still wouldn't draw so card. It's gonna be a Thalia, still get to play Emperor for five. And Aspirants. There's a chance they don't attack here to play around Wandering Emperor, we'll see. Alright, that works, but they did enable Coven by playing those creatures. And by exiling Sigarda in response to the Coven trigger, we uh, take them off Coven, so that trigger also checks on resolution, so it's important to exile in response here. So I wouldn't quite be able to draw with Revelry, but still like, kind of uh, emptying my hand here. And then counter can go on Mila, so we can still block a 3 power Thalia. Strike fast and strike hard. Brutal Cathar goes after Mila. At least we get to draw a card. And yeah, just want to find another sweeper basically. Thalia attacks. Do we want to chump or take two? Let's take two for now. Another Wandering Emperor is not bad. So we could exile Thalia with the current one, play Ascendancy for three and still have four mana Emperor available. Yeah, that checks out. Is fun. So pass it back. Does not transform back to knight. And adversary to pump the team. Okay. But our opponent concedes. Okay, I guess uh, they maybe misstapped their mana, not leaving up enough whites to pay for the ability. And uh, they felt like that was worth conceding over, which probably not the case, but. I think we were in good shape here with Wandering Emperor being able to exile a Brutal Cathar if that attacked, or maybe an Aspirant, and then still have our cave if we ever top deck a Sweeper. We'll easily take over with Ascendancy providing card advantage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Got our card draw engine, some good plays against aggressive starts from our opponents. Wandering Emperor can clean up. I guess we could use a sweeper at some points. And then I think I'm still happy to play my garden instead of maybe cycling it. Opponent's gonna play with fire or face, so Boros aggro slash burn. Happy to have. Or play set of sunset revelry. So do we see a hasty creature here? We don't. So their hand must be pretty heavy on the burn spells. Maybe next turn a Raichu, which we can exile with Wandering Emperor. And yeah, then double Revelry will certainly be helpful with all the life gain. Skyclave Apparition instead, not a card you usually see. Exiles, Ascendancy, that's too bad. Now, a Revelry would not draw me any cards, does gain life and make tokens. I think I would prefer to run out a Wandering Emperor here. Happy to exile a Den of the Bugbear if they activate that instead. Okay, so we'll let that attack. Although I guess if we exile Apparition, we can just block Den with the token we get in response. Could also make a Samurai to just block the Den. So we have a lot of options. Kind of like getting rid of both here. So let's exile Apparition, get a 3-3, and then block Den, which is pretty hard for us to deal with otherwise. And now can play a land. Revelry would gain life, make tokens, and if we play Ascendancy, also draw a card. 
So the perfect revelry. And then put a counter on one of our 1-1 one -one tokens. Alright, that was a great turn. Remember your training. Got our ascendancy back. Although they might have more apparitions given how slow their hands has played out so far. Opponent looking through the graveyard. Is there maybe an Invoke Justice coming up? Not a card I necessarily expected. But yeah, they could definitely have it. It's going to be Nothar's Skyclave instead. Going after Ascendancy. Opponent doesn't want us to have any fun. Getting rid of our build around card twice. Oh well. Guess we'll just get there some other way. Arian deals with Apparition nicely. If there is a potential Invoke Justice, they would get Apparition back, so exiling it would be better. Either way, we will probably be fine. This seems like a good use of our mana. So... Plus on... 1-1. One, one. Can uh, attack first and just offer the trade. Or we can Arya right now. Guess we can offer the trade. Opponent takes it. And uh, sure, kill Apparition, get a 3-3 back. Still have a march to exile token, and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and seems acceptable. And then... Let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain. So, can play companion on three, which will do a good job of protecting our planeswalkers as well. Going on blue red. Blue red, not our favorite matchup, admittedly. This might get countered, does not. So, at least once it's in play, it's gonna draw us a card if they answer it. The combination of counter spells and then. Hasty dragons that can finish off our Planeswalkers is generally not where the Planeswalker Super Friends deck wants to be. So our opponent lets Mila stay in play. And next turn can go for Arlen. Maybe attack first. Opponent does have the Braid to kill it. We'll get to draw. Best case scenario would have drawn Wandering Emperor to flash in, put a counter on it. Don't get to quite live that dream. But get to resolve an Arlen to make a pair of wolves. And, and yeah, the rest of our hands. Vivian's not bad, but uh, generally don't need a ton of sweepers in this matchup. Maybe Revelry can still draw a card at the very least. Get to see the neat checkboxes here. Iteration, good two for one. Our better draws would include our various 5-mana Planeswalkers, either Elspeth or Renan 7. Field of Ruin can try and mess up our mana at some point, or deal with a cave, but have one of each basic, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. Ooh, a Cleansing Wildfire, so they are pretty heavy on the land destruction, so probably a Bombardment deck. Well, we've got the basic mountain. And March the draw. So we're not doing a whole lot here. Can play a Revelry, draw, and see what we pick up. Aria, another sweeper that's probably not gonna be too useful. Wait for the perfect moment to strike. So... Attack for four. Keeping up March, which at the very least is an answer to enchantments, and so is Farewell. So if Bombardment shows up, we should be able to answer it. Could see a 5 mana sweeper deal with everything. Burn down the house, quite synergistic with bombardment. So that's probably in their deck, and they didn't have necessarily the mana to cast it. So playing Vivian making a rhino seems pretty risky in the face of burn down the house next turn. Fleetfoot Dancer, I guess, gives us an alternative play. Still dies to 5 damage, even with a plus 1 counter, but at least gets a good attack in. And then we get to follow up with Vivian. So, that's an option, or we can just play Fleetfoot at instant speed, uh, thanks to Arlen. Yeah, and their opponent may still cast a Sweeper here. 
That's maybe the best overall. So we'll hit for four. And pass. Transforms to knight, so Arlen can uh, also maybe turn into a creature here. So, probably see a burn down the house. Yep, and then hope there's no bounce spell afterwards to deal with our dancer. 5-5. Five, five. Alright, get to untap. And then hit for 5, play Vivian, make a Rhino. And hope to dodge a second burn down the house. That works. And I should probably play around Majority Disruption. Could also plus two. That way if they burn down, I'll still have a one loyalty Vivian left over. We're not sacking Dancer since there's no five mana creatures to get. So... Is that to play? Certainly possible for them to have a second sweeper. But I also want to apply enough pressure here so that if they don't have it, we can actually close out the game. Our hand is very reactive, so it's not particularly effective at closing out the game anytime soon. Alright, let's make a Rhino and cross our fingers. My hope is that they're just holding Bombardment that they haven't been able to play, maybe some more card draw spells or smaller burn spells. Opponent is looking at the graveyard, so Bombardment seems like a possibility. Farewell can deal with artifacts, enchantments and graveyards, which is a pretty solid answer here. But they may get lucky, play Bombardment and a 1 mana spell, and then get a free burn down the house. It's going to be a big score instead, discarding Flame Blast Bolts, which is what they were holding. They still have the mana for a burn down. But they don't have it, and our opponent concedes. Awesome. So yeah, tough decision there with Vivian, but uh, things worked out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got our turn 3 Ascendancy into some Planeswalkers, and then Revelry to catch us back up if we're up against an aggressive deck. And Red-White certainly points in that direction. Turn to Aspirants. That one we could Fateful Absence. Yeah, I guess we'll just pass with Absence up since Revelry right now does not necessarily do a whole lot. Just make some 1-1s. One and then we'll Absence before Aspirin triggers, I guess, if it's the only creature we can let it attack. And next turn maybe play Ascendancy for not under too much pressure. Put maybe missing a land drop goes to sacrifice the clue. And they didn't find it, so get to play Ascendancy to potentially pull ahead. But their hands can be full of action and a Cavalier gonna smack us for three. Land on top. Uh, doesn't seem necessary since we can still play Ren with double green here. Doomscar's not bad, so we're kind of incentivized to make a play so Cavalier doesn't trigger, although we can probably exile it with Emperor anyway. Uh, they might have a burn spell to finish it off, but I might want to let them attack with two hasty creatures, exile one of them so the Emperor survives, is what I'm trying to get at. So I think we do pass. Cavalier triggers. And see if they have another haste creature here. Alright, just a cavalier. So we'll exile that and then probably lose Emperor to a burn spell, but that's okay. But I'm going to end it. My judgment is final. So play with fire, finishes off Wandering Emperor, and that's the opponent's entire turn. 
Farewell on top seems okay. Now we might lose a token from Renan 7 to Brutal Cathar, and then they could finish it off with a Burn Spell, which would be a reason to maybe just not make a Tree Folk right away. We do have a Doomscar in hand already, so maybe Farewell is not what I need. Sure, I guess we can afford to bottom here, since we already have Doomscar. Mila is good for protection. So, what's our play here? Could go for Tell Doomscar, play Mila. Could Ren and then just plus. And then we would have a 6 loyalty Planeswalker. Kind of like that idea too. Opponent could also be holding a Valorous Stance, which answers our Tree Folk. So, we'll play it slow. Thundering Raiju hits Ren for 4. We are and Ascendancy finds Wandering Emperor, perfect. So sequencing. So we can play Wandering Emperor. And then play Revelry afterwards, and then minus on Raiju, so we get to draw here. And then minus Exile Raiju, and then activate Ren. And we could even decide to use a zero ability to put Cave in play, but our opponent's already seen enough and packs it in. Alright, so got to see our Naya Planeswalker deck in action. And yeah, certainly built to beat some of the Boros aggro decks and can do so successfully. If we're up against kind of the more classic mono-white variants, I think we might be in a bit more trouble between Thalia taxing our non-creature spells and Spellbinder maybe taking away a key card. I think uh, the mono-white deck has a much better chance as opposed to Boros, but that's why we kind of fine-tuned our deck to beat Boros, which is the most popular deck in Best of One Standard at the moment. And then other decks that are more controlling are definitely going to give us some more issues. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this deck outside of this very narrow metagame full of Boros, otherwise still a fun deck to play in the regular play queue. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.